Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name is Trevon. I work with Century 21 Mike Bowman in the DFW Metroplex, and this is Moving to Texas. Today, we're going to do something. I've done this in the past, actually, so I won't say it's something different, uh, but we're going to just do some reactions to some videos that I saw on TikTok, just as far as re regarding the real estate market. And then I'm just going to give you my take. Uh, now, I haven't seen some of these videos through the whole entire thing, so we'll see how they turn out. So, yeah, of course some of this information will be factual right and then some of this is purely opinion because it really depends on where you live what your price point is what neighborhood you're shopping in your interest rate and then when you get down to that the specific home right if the seller wants to get rid of the home they'll get rid of it if they don't they don't and that's the same with buying if the buyer wants to buy the home they'll find a way to buy the home and if they don't want to buy the home they won't so yeah let's get right into the videos first one in the deck renters can expect a three percent cap on rental increases in 2025 makes a big difference there's there's like all these homeowners trying to charge people like almost 3k and for like such a small living space my rent's 1200 bucks yeah i got four roommates you can't even get an sro now for less than well 750 750 there are some but i mean conditions are not livable as far as i'm concerned love the city like i like to live in vancouver it's just everything is really expensive and the rent most um the most is the most expensive thing it's very little yeah it's very little it's already high so like it's you know like it's already up here so if you're slowing that down like it's you need more housing you need to get to the root of it i want an inexpensive place to live don't get me wrong but i feel for landlords i think it's actually quite reasonable it's cost of living obviously there's a problem yeah yeah i mean so rent is going high home values are going up at least that's what the trajectory looks like in the future so it is kind of tough hearing that you know people are putting themselves in this situation now I have put myself in this situation when I first got an apartment in Austin, just it was just too expensive for my lifestyle. So there is part of that, you know, the realization to just, you know, start a little lower and then build up. But that is a harder pill to swallow for most. And I'll be honest, the way that the structure is moving, things, yeah, things aren't going to get cheaper. It's going to be more expensive to rent. It's going to cost more to rent. The criteria to rent is already more difficult just because of what happened in 2020. And nobody wants a renter that's not going to pay the rent. So you have to look at it both sides. If you own a property, do you want someone that can pay the rent, right? You, you want to guarantee someone's going to pay the rent and you want to make sure they're paying the rent. Not only that, but you want to make some also because there's overhead as well. Of course, you know, certain tenants... There are certain landlords, they make their tenants pay specific bills or they don't, right? I, I lived in a duplex at one point. I know the only thing we had to pay was the water. At, I mean, obviously in rent. And even then, she gave us an amazing discount. So it does go both ways. What I will say is that a lot of people will say that owning homes is, is useless and it's just a, you get stuck, it's a trap. And in some cases, if you do not do the right research, you know, you really can position yourself probably where you didn't want to. In many cases, with being in the real estate industry, what I saw in 2020 and what I'm seeing now is people are selling their homes and they've only owned them for four, three, five years. They're walking away with hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity. Now, this isn't gonna happen every single time in real estate, right? So, so the fact that this is happening is once in a lifetime to a degree. But anytime something happens, the first thing that people grab on hold to is housing. What are the most expensive people or what are the richest people companies in the world's doing? They're buying housing, they're collecting assets. So it's definitely one of the safest ways to create wealth. Yes, there are pros and cons to each, but as a broader scenario, I definitely think renting is going to increase they're going to start making more apartments you already hear that they're saying they don't want you to rent or they don't want you to own they want you to rent so that will be the narrative in the future and if you're stuck in a situation where you're renting at 
above 2500 a month you definitely most likely can buy a home um, and pay a little bit more right but you at least will own the home you can still get a roommate you can still have a partner in there and share there's definitely a lot of avenues to get into a home and then not only that let's say you are seeing that your mortgage is going to be too high on the home try to buy down that interest rate right work it into the deal depending on the market you're in it's possible to get it bought down by the seller or negotiated into the real estate deal so stay optimistic renters and if you're someone that's on the fence feel free to reach out give me a call and i can uh help you out maybe provide you some insight all right next video money i think it makes a big difference there's there's like all these report points to DFW as the top market in the country for real estate investment and development next year. It's a ranking that experts say matters whether you are looking to buy a home or even invest in real estate. NBC5's David Goins has this update. What's the best way to describe the seemingly continuous run of high-rise developments in Dallas and Fort Worth? combined with home building in all directions. You know, I think what it says is that you're in a marketplace where opportunities exist. It's an image confirmed in new ranking that pegs DFW as the place to buy, build, and finance property in 2025. Yeah, I have actually done a few videos on this if you're already a follower of the channel. Well, if you're already a follower of the channel, excuse me. The expected growth for DFW is outrageous. So much growth is coming. So many companies are coming. The amount of new construction that is building. If you're someone that's lived here, you are already seeing it, right? The amount of major projects coming to the area, astronomical. Did a report where we're going to surpass New York as the number one city, or as the number one builder of apartment units, 2025 and 2026. We we're only three units behind them this year in 2024 and we've got way more space than new york right so exciting times if you're looking at it in the, on the investment side development side infrastructure side if you're on the side of trying to catch up that could be a con prices most likely aren't going down much more they they really have over the last year and a half two years right 30 percent 40 40 percent to a degree the higher the price point the lower they're going down right but the areas is where you have to key in on many of the cities in dfw are in the top 100 of growing u.s markets therefore a lot of eyes are on them people moving from california people moving from new york people moving from montana everywhere they're coming to texas they're coming to dfw and people here may not like it you already can see here in these comments over here i'll pull this over you can see you know people are no no you know most importantly dfw no no so houses are going up some more you know what i mean so it is going to happen whether you like it or not so if you're on the fence i would just try to look at if it's possible for you to buy maybe if it's possible you for maybe if it's possible for you to invest maybe buy some land in these outer areas before they start to really see their development come lots of opportunity right and then on the counter if you own maybe wait a little longer you might get the price you want or this is your indication to say hey the area is not going to get a little got the area is not going to get any more quieter right it's just going to get much more busier much more popular much more populated so however you want to look at it dfw is on the rise one of the top markets for real estate investment in 2025 and i think later i have another video somewhat touching on these on this topic so yeah it's exciting news but i bet you there's many people because if you've already seen the traffic is is it's pretty hardcore to a degree right now they're adding on some lanes but they're also adding tolls so it's like man you know but all right next video A real estate forecast is predicting that DFW is going to be a hot market for real estate and development. In fact, it is predicted to be the best place to buy, build, or finance property next year. That report, first reported by our Dallas Morning News partners, cited post-pandemic recovery, the size of our area, and continued growth over time as reasons for rising from third place this year. A real estate forecast is predicting that DFW is going to be a hot market. Yeah, so I guess I had that video next. But again another report 
things aren't going to get any cheaper. You're already seeing people complain about how things are more expensive here. And, and this is even like Benton, McKinney, these outer areas, they're becoming expensive. So, and it can be frustrating depending on the lens you look at because they are building new construction homes, South Fort Worth, um, some areas of Dallas that are somewhat under 350000 I won't comment on if these are homes that look good or not because it depends on the buyer and right and everybody gets an opportunity right for so so for some it'll be a beautiful home and for some it'll be cookie cutter so it depends on you look at it but what i'll say is there's still opportunity right this is a market where you're seeing a lot of sellers on a lot of equity ready to kind of transform their life change it up you know maybe go and buy a boat maybe go and move to another country maybe go and just travel right They've owned their home for 20 years, 15 years, and they're going to walk away with 400,000, 300,000 straight cash getting an asking offer, right? Like getting an offer 30,000, 40,000 under the asking price, right? Doesn't mean that some are going to accept it, but you are seeing that some that are accepting it. So lots of opportunity in there. Maybe not the best time to sell for your top dollar, but you're still seeing it, right? I'm seeing homes above. I don't I want to say 800,000 if it's a if it's a nice home. No, not even even save a price point. If it's a nice home, beautiful location, beautiful items inside, great neighborhood, safe, feels safe. Feels like that dream home. It still can go over asking in days. You're seeing it happen. So, yeah, positive things happening, but I would tell you that this is a great time to take a strike. It really is at trying to buy a home. As far as getting negotiated and or as far as negotiating good deals for yourself, right? You'll see later on, I'm going to do a, there's a video about interest rates and where they expect to go. You know, of course, this guy could be wrong, but we'll I'll talk about it then. Okay, next video. Just under 40% of early voters said housing affordability influenced their choice. That according to a new report from Redfin with a larger share of Harris than Trump voters saying it was a factor. So let's look at how affordability has changed in the last four years. First, the own versus rent equation. In November 2020, it was cheaper to own than to rent a home in the vast majority of the country. That just flips on its head today. Home ownership is now much more expensive due to the sharp increase in home prices fueled by the pandemic with its initial record low mortgage rates and then, of course, the sudden migration. Home prices now about 45 percent higher than they were in 2020, according to S&P Case-Shiller. Now, rents also rose in that period, but they have been coming down recently due to the oversupply of apartments. So well, let's go to the battleground states. The share of income needed to own a home today has at least doubled since 2020 in four out of the seven. Arizona has seen the smallest change. Now, these are the states, though, where it is least affordable to own a home. Georgia's not far behind. On the rent side of that, North Carolina saw the biggest jump in the rent burden, while Nevada's rent burden actually came down. Both Harris and Trump agree housing costs are too high. Harris has proposed building 3 million new housing units with an expansion of existing tax credits and new tax credits. She's also called for a home buyer tax credit as well as rent caps. Now, Trump is less specific, but has called for opening more federal lands for housing and cutting back regulations to make building easier. Trump has also said he'll lower mortgage rates. But of course, presidents don't set interest rates. Back to you guys. I actually want to go to one of these charts. Yeah, this chart. Yeah, so owning to rent first now. And yeah, it's much higher to own right now, strictly because of the interest rates. I mean, you can say pricing, but even a home under 250000 you're paying 22000 a month, right? If not more, depending on the insurance you have and where you live. And the way it's going, it could flip, right? If you refinance years later, yes, it's possible for you to get that mortgage rate down, right? There's ways for you to negotiate in the real estate deal to get those, to get concessions so you can buy down that rate possibly to get it lower than what you want to pay. So I definitely feel that this is misleading information. No, I mean, not that it's false. But there are ways for you to own a home affordably. There are areas transforming where they are building nice homes, remodeling homes that are affordable, right? 
And I think that this is one of the key factors about the news that I don't like is that the, I understand that they have very few, you know, very limited time to explain their, their piece or, or the news that they're trying to share. But there really is some opportunity here, right? It's not the market where you had to come in over asking, pay all the closing costs, and then move into a home that needs a lot of work. This is not that time currently, right? Depending on the neighborhood, but those are neighborhoods that if you're barely on the cusp of buying a home, you're not even going to look into, right? So I definitely feel this is a bit misleading, but this is the way it's going to go, right? Where do you see rent going down as far as the long haul? I mean, I don't personally. Yes, there are a lot of homes that are for rent right now, and they've been so they've been vacant for quite a bit of time. So sellers are are like, "Hey, we just need somebody in here, please." Either way you look at it, I think over time owning is definitely one of the better and most helpful ways to get and grow wealth. Of course, it's going to depend on the factor. That's why you got to do your research before you buy. But don't let things like this put fear into your head. and buying so logic would dictate sure why not rent it's cheaper but everybody almost everybody has this idea that the american dream is still owning your own home but for the first time buyer they're the hardest hit they have to compete the hardest have the least amount of cash to compete so they're not making cash offers and they're losing four to five houses that they're interested in I would not want to be a first time buyer. I don't know what's really going to give there, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. You know, I respect this lady. You know what I mean? I'm not, I have nothing bad to say about her, but I definitely feel that this is fear mongering, putting fear out there. First time homeowners, I'm telling you, you got a lot more deals than you think, right? Depending on what you make now, you might make more, but I know in Fort Worth, they're offering up to 25,000 for first time homeowners right in these situations you can get your closing costs provided for you as a grant depending on the stipulation of your loan now you're gonna to have to speak to a lender to really narrow down these and if you need one give me a call okay but there are many opportunities i'm telling you many clients i've been able to get into their homes and they did not have to pay a single dollar okay it all depends on the home you're looking for the, the deal how it's structured the lender you choose, but I promise you this, it is not as insanely impossible as what she's making it out to seem. Now, yes, in certain situations, if you have competition on the home that you're looking for and you're going against a cash buyer, if you guys have the same offer, if your offer is 5,000, 2,000 more than theirs, maybe a quicker close than theirs, maybe a little more respectful than theirs, even though it's cash, you got the better offer. If the agent's smart, so don't look at it as, I mean, at the end of the day, at closing, the seller gets all of the money up front. Cash, FHA, VA, doesn't matter the loan. They get funded, boom, that money hits their account. Then the rest is for you to pay, you know what I'm saying? Or to the bank. So the way she's wording this, very scary, but parts partly true. In market of 2020, 2021, when I was in Austin, I literally had a client go in this, go in, we go, we're going in to do the offer for this house, right? I'm telling them, okay, it's got multiple offers. It doesn't comp out to what they're saying that we need to be at, right? I'm asking the agent, like, I, I know this market, how, you know, what are we, you know, is, is 40 K over even this serious offer, this agent, dude, this agent told me that. And I don't know if he was supposed to or not, but this agent told me that the offer was 40% over the asking price. The asking price for this home was $350,000. Let me just do the calculation. Okay. So we have $350,000 home times 40%. So the offer was $140,000 over the asking. This is what the agent told me. He, not, he didn't tell me the number. 
He said it was 40% over the asking price. The home's not even going to appraise for near that. I'm telling my client, like, I, I can't tell you to bid over this. I, the ho- look at the area. N- not a single home will appraise for this value. So it can be a tough situation if you don't have cap- capital and you need it for a specific offer, right? But in the end, maybe that home was not the home for you. All right, next video. Check out mortgage rate projections. If you're waiting for a sharp decline in rates, check this out. Fannie Mae, Mortgage Bankers Association, Wells Fargo, and National Association of Realtors all predict a slow, steady creep downward. No massive drop in rates. Counter to this, homes should continue to appreciate due to the limited inventory. So these may offset a little bit. So if you're waiting on that big rate drop before jumping into the market, that may not be the best move. Follow your local realtor's advice on your particular market and jump in at the time that's appropriate for you. But waiting on rates may not be the sole factor you need to consider. Follow M. Rice online for more. Check out mortgage. Yeah, shout out to this guy. Spot on. Large money. Already anticipating it. They bought their rates down a long time ago. What happens when rates go down? Affordability into the buyer pool. What happens when more buyers have more money to spend? They spend more. If you are on the fence, waiting for rates to drop, thinking that this will save you money, it will not save you money as far as purchase price. It will not save you money as far as negotiations for the most part. Now, if the home that you go in, you do your inspection, it's a lot of things come up, you know, they might be obligated to really work with you, right? Depending on the situation. But what will happen is you will lose your leverage because there will be more people that have the capital to try to get the home, said home, Maybe they have more experience in building or framing or something else that you don't. They can get into the home. Or maybe they know a guy, know a roofer. They can get into the home. You're going to have more buyers looking at said home, right? Inventory has doubled from last year, but inventory is still below. It will increase. Luckily, where we live, DFW, they're building so much. And there's so many homes for sale. But the majority of the buyer pool is afraid right now. So... As we see this line up here, drip, drip, drip downwards, you will see more buyers hop into the pool, therefore making values most likely tick, tick, tick back up. It's not going to be the sharp aggressiveness we saw in 2020, where money was for money. Literally, you could, you were loaning, people were getting loans for free. That was the idea when you're getting a rate under 2%, 3%. And then it flipped. When rates were 6%, 8%, 7%. Now it's going to trickle down. And that will create a very, very attractive time frame for the real estate market, in my opinion. So will this save you money waiting for interest rates to drop? I would say no. Not in the DFW market. In some other markets, it could help you. It could help you. Rates go down, buyers are able to access more capital. When buyers are able to access more capital, more times than not, they're going to be closer to their max than not, right? Not Maybe not the best opinion, but if you can qualify for 350, you might look at homes that are worth 350. So it just depends. At the end of the day, it all depends on your situation, right? This video is not to, to put FOMO out there. It's just to illustrate what might happen in the DFW Metroplex across the board. And you can look at it as a good thing or a bad thing. I think the way to look at it is take advantage of the information that you've been provided and see what happens. Ask the right questions. Feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text, and I can tell you specifically about an area, right? And if it isn't to my expertise, I'll go and ask for help and get you the information, 
right? That way we can both learn something, right? That, at the end of the day, that's what all this is about, learning and trying to do what's right when it comes to real estate because it can seem very, very scary. But when you've kind of done it for quite a bit of time, I, mean, I know I'm not someone who's done it for 20, 25 years, but, you know, six, seven years, you start to see that, hey, you know what I mean? There are a lot of opportunities where people aren't looking. And then there's a lot of times and situations where they still can learn. And this is one of those times, right? It's going to be an exciting time. We're moving into a time where elections just ended. People should get out more. It is the middle of the season, school season, so things are still kind of slow, but interest rates are dropping as homes are somewhat affordable, right? On the grand scheme of things. And they're leading to a way where they're not affordable. So it's going to be very interesting. So much development coming. We already see where DFW is headed. So I would say it's great things overall, man. Um, but that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this video. If you, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Again, my name is Trevon. I work with Century 21 Mike Bowman. I'm out in the DFW Metroplex, but all of uh, the DFW area, we, we serve and help. So if you got questions, shoot me a text. My contact information will be in the description below. But yeah, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. If you learned something, if you're feeling the vibe, subscribe, leave a like. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that home prices will continue to go down or continue to go up? What are your thoughts? But yeah, thank you if you watched this long, and I will catch you guys next week. All right, later. Century 21 Real Estate. Move fearlessly.